This was brought to you by Roger Hansen, King with Infamous, on YouTube, Roger Hansen on Patreon, and Franklin County Internet Society on Facebook. This book contains mundane alchemical and magical items for your Dungeons and Dragons game. We have carefully scrutinized them for game balance and obedience to the rules. Nevertheless, we urge game masters and players to discuss these items before their first appearance because each D&D campaign is unique. An adventure set in an extremely cold region might go awry if characters have access to new items that do fire damage because many opponents are vulnerable to fire, for example. Incorporating items into your campaign. The, s the simplest way to add the new equipment in this book to your game is to just do it. Add the items without explaining where they came from and why characters are just learning about them. Everyone around the table agrees to simply adopt the fiction that the items have always been available. Maybe mundane and alchemical items were always for sale in shops and bazaars the player characters never happened to visit. One day the player characters meet a new merchant in the marketplace and gain access to new items. If that stretches credulity too far, Dungeon Masters may instead encourage player characters to develop or design new items as they need them, for instance, the first time characters need a flexible collapsible ladder they can design and build the spider poles described in Chapter 2 Adventuring Gear. Dungeon Masters may gradually introduce new equipment as non-player characters discover the design and build the new items. Player characters may discover new items when they travel to new regions, for example, if they travel to an oasis on the edge of the desert, they'll probably encounter merchants selling the desert outfits described in Chapter 2 Adventuring Gear. Finally, Dungeon Masters can take a long-term approach, adding the equipment from this book gradually and sparingly. To start, plant rumors and legends about strange magical items. As the characters gain levels and venture into more dangerous places, they uncover fragments of lost tales, including information about the magic items in this book. When the player characters finally find new magic items in a dragon hoard or similar treasure trove, they'll already know them by reputation. What's in this book? The Arms and Equipment Guide, as you might expect, is devoted mainly to descriptions of new weapons, armor, and gear that characters and creatures can possess. However, this book is much more than a catalog of new items. Chapter by chapter, here's a summary of what you'll find inside. Chapter, chapter 1, Weapons and Armor introduces dozens of new non-magical weapons and types of armor. Here you'll also find discussions of which weapons and armor types should be available during certain technological eras if the technology in your campaign is more primitive than in the historical medieval era. Chapter 2, Adventuring Gear greatly expands the equipment and accoutrements available to characters and creatures, including adventuring gear, clothing, jewelry, edible items, alchemical items, superior items, and commodities. This chapter also features a long list of new poisons and their game statistics. Chapter 3, Vehicles opens with a general discussion of the characteristics of vehicles and how to handle vehicles in play, particularly during combat and in the event of a collision. The chapter has a section on vehicle augmentations magical and mundane accessories that characters can purchase to customize their vehicles or expand their capabilities. The last part of the chapter contains game statistics and other information about more than two dozen vehicles including special modes of transport such as the Dwarven Tumbler and the Shadow Carriage. Chapter 4, Hirelings and Creatures provides rules for finding hirelings and determining how much they charge to perform the work they're good at including cost for hiring someone to cast a spell on your behalf. Those who want to assemble a fighting force will make use of this chapter's rules for hiring mercenaries and the advice on which kinds of monsters make the best exotic troops. This chapter continues with a discussion of creatures that can serve as companions, pets, mounts, and guard creatures. New creatures described in this chapter include the Climb Dog, Thud Hunter, Axe Break, Hippocampus, Equine Golem, Zeratin, Sorwell Giant Dragonfly, and Giant Firefly. Chapter 5 Magic Items take up more than one-fourth of this book. Following the format of Chapter 8 in the Dungeon Master's Guide, this chapter provides new special abilities for magic armor, shields, and weapons, several new types of magic armor and shields, more than 150 new specific magic weapons, and separate sections for new potions, rings, rods, staffs, and wondrous items. 
Chapter 6, Special Magic Items presents new material on intelligent items, cursed magic items, and artifacts, also in the format of Chapter 8 in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Appendix, Treasure Tables are a compilation of tablets that can be used to randomly generate items of treasure from among those present in this book. This was brought to you by Roger Hansen, Gaming with Infamous, on YouTube, Patreon, and Anchor. We are on Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on Facebook, too. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.